Hello there. My name is Jose Daniel Lopez Barrientos, and I will be your designated speaker for the next 16 minutes with 25 seconds. Let's get started. Do you remember who Captain Subasa was? Well, I hope you do because, uh, well, here in Mexico, we knew him as uh, Oliver Atom. And, um, well, I'll be talking to you about football. And, uh, well, this is a joint work which is currently under development. And, uh, well, I hope you enjoy it. I work at the Faculty of Actuarial Sciences of uh, Universidad Nahuac, Mexico. Uh, this uh, faculty is the only as such in all of Latin America, and Universidad Nahuac is one of the top three best universities in all of Mexico. Here I give you the overview of our talk. So uh, let's uh, start with uh, a short uh, remembrance. Do you remember who Paul Gascoigne was? Paul Gascoigne also said once that uh, he never predicted anything, that, that he would never do it, which of course is a huge contradiction. Uh, don't you agree? This talk is precisely trying to predict the future. So just for a quick example, what would you say the outcome of a direct match between uh, Boca Juniors and Atletico de Madrid would be? Mm, maybe. Many of you will say that uh, it depends directly on who the home team is, right? We asked 33 of our students the exact same question, and uh, here are the results. So, 22% of them thought that Boca would win. 22% of them thought that uh, the teams would tie. And uh, look at this. Almost 56% of them thought that Aleti would be the victor. Now, what if instead of just asking people what the result will be, um, we take some statistics? So, for instance, take uh, the Senegalese League of Football in, the, in this season. So, here you can see the minimum number of goals during a match, the maximum, the total number of goals, the total number of matches during that season, the average goal per match, and the um, probability of goal per minute. So, we will see that this is the histogram of frequencies, right, for the Senegalese League, right? We can perform the exact same experiment with uh, the Spanish La Liga during this season, right? And uh, you will see that even though there are many more goals in this uh, competition, well, the pattern um, drawn by the histogram of frequencies is exactly the same. The same thing happens with the Major League Soccer during season 2019. And, uh, well, look at this. The same histogram emerges, right? For the Superliga Argentina, we can see the exact same thing and the exact same uh, histogram of frequencies, right? Now, uh, we will take our beloved Liga MX during season 2016 and look at this. The histogram of frequencies looks uh, exactly the same, so we have a common pattern, right? The common pattern we're looking for is called binomial distribution with parameters MP. A binomial random variable is a variable that counts, in this case, the number of goals that uh, are recorded in the score, right? So if we take, for instance, n equal to 90 experiments and p equal to the probability of uh, seeing a goal during one minute, these are the probabilities for each of the leagues just quoted. When it comes to counting things, for instance, goals during a match, we can always talk about accounting process. Accounting process is a stochastic process, which at least has the value of zero. It is always valued in the integer numbers. It is a non-decreasing stochastic process. And well, this is the number of goals scored in a given interval. Here we see a comparison between the empiric distributions, the ones in blue, against the counting process given by the binomial random variable for Senegal, for Spain, for USA, and for Argentina. Now, when it comes to counting goals during a match, there is a big limitation that the binomial random variable has, and it is that uh, it gives us only 90 chances to score. And uh, Robert Lewandowski, 
is one of the reasons for which uh, this is a limitation. What if instead of taking a binomial random variable to count goals, we use a different counting process, say a Poisson process? It just looks the same as a binomial counting process, but it has these special features. The first one says that uh, if we have a really, really, really small time interval, then the probability of seeing a goal is uh, proportional to this special number, which in our case will be the average of goals during a match. And uh, here it says that the probability that at least two goals are scored in an infinitely small interval of time is uh, about zero. Now, one of the classic results in probability theory is that a binomial random variable converges in distribution to a Poisson random variable. We will certainly not stop uh, to see the complete proof of that fact. The thing is that, uh, well, if we look at the histograms that uh, are produced with the empiric distribution, with the binomial distribution and the Poisson distribution for the four cases of these leagues, then we can just uh, easily believe what the result says. What have we earned? Well, for starters, we have managed to characterize the whole set of empiric probabilities by a single Poisson parameter, that is. We have uh, managed to change the whole set of numbers that represent the goals of uh, every team during uh, one season for just one number, that is the Poisson parameter which is the average number of goals for uh, one season in any given country. Now, if we define tau1 as the time elapsed until the first goal and tau i, the time elapsed between the i minus one goal and the next one, we'll have that each of the members of this sequence of times of arrival is distributed according to an exponential random variable. Geometrically, this looks like this. At time zero, we're just with zero goals, right? And at the random time, tau one, we go from zero goals to one goal and stay there for some time. Now, if we have that, for instance, uh, we were at time zero with uh, zero goals, and at time tau one, we go from zero to one and stay there for a random amount of time, uh, which will be tau two. Then at some time, we'll go from uh, the first goal to the second one. This is essentially the idea behind the proof uh, of the fact that these times of arrival are distributed according to an exponential random variable. We will use this idea to simulate goals. So we will take the inverse transform method for simulating realizations of a given random variable. In our case, exponential random variables, which will represent the times of arrival of each of the goals during a given match. If we take the result for granted, then we will be able to actually code it in, for instance, a programming language to the end of simulating the goals. We can use the information we just uh, had for the histograms of frequencies of uh, the leagues to which these two teams belong to, to compile this table of uh, matches at home, goals for at home, goals against at home, matches away, goals for away, and goals against away for Atletico and for Boca Juniors. And then feed our algorithm with the, these numbers in the following fashion. With add information, we can see that the mean of the goals scored by Aleti as host was of 32 over 19, whereas the mean of the goals received by Boca was of 11 over 13. In such a way, 
that the number of goals that uh, we can assume that Aleti will score when they play against Boca will be an average between the number of goals that they score at home and the number of goals that Boca receives as visitors. We can do an analogous thing for Boca by seeing that this is the mean of the goals scored by Boca away and this is the mean of the goals received by Aleti when they are at home. Now, if we feed with these parameters algorithm one, then we see again our code and okay, here we see that number which we were talking about before, right? For Aleti and for Boca, right? So we can use our function, the, func the function we just programmed with these two parameters for Aleti and for Boca, you see? And for instance, in this case, Boca won. In this case, Aleti won. And so on, so forth, up to, well, almost 12,000 simulations. Now, at the end, we can just compute the frequency of all these simulations and see in how many times Aleti won, how many times Boca won, and how many times we had a tie. And in here we can see that Aleti won 42% of the times, whereas Boca won 30% of the times, and the rest corresponded to ties between the two teams. We can take the exact same assumptions, but uh, in the mirror, that is, for a match played at La Bombonera in Buenos Aires. Now, we can see that the mean of the goals that uh, Boca scores as host uh, will be of 22 over 12, whereas the mean of the goals received by Aleti was of uh, 1. Then we can feed our algorithm with uh, these numbers, right? Take an average. And uh, we can feed our algorithm with these other numbers for Aleti. And uh, well, in that case, we'll see that the mean for Aleti. And here we have the mean for Boca, right? And uh, here we have uh, invocations to the program Generate Poisson, right? For Aleti, and in this case it gives zero goals. And for Boca, in this case it gives one goal. And after almost 12,000 simulations, we can take proportions, right? To see that the probability that Aleti wins at uh, Buenos Aires is about 23%, the probability that Boca wins is of almost 50%, and the probability of a tie is of 27%. The idea of taking averages of really large samples traces back to the times of Cardano, Haley, Kepler, the Wheat, the Moabra, the Bernoulli brothers, Monmort, Laplace, and finally Kolmogorov and Gnedenko, and it's called the weak law of large numbers. This law, which we could prove by using the central limit theorem. Now, if we use this result to simulate each tournament 10,000 times, then we would get that Argentina would have as champions the Racing Club that uh, Spain would have as champions, Barcelona, that the United States would see uh, Los Angeles crowning themselves, that uh, Senegal would see the ASC Giraffe becoming champions, and that in Mexico, Monterrey would be champions. Now, the whole point of our presentation was to present a way to simulate results that goes from uh, taking just uh, empiric distributions to the Poisson random process. And then to just use the weak law of large numbers to simulate, for instance, a tournament, a football tournament. And uh, well, 
that's it. Here we present our references. And finally, we thank you for your very kind attention.